Laura Vandekam believes anyone can make a perfect schedule. Time management masters make resilient schedules. Hi everyone, I'm Kat of Kat's Novel Adventures. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I did with rule number five, create a backup slot for the Tranquility by Tuesday challenge. <laughs> Most of us enjoy having activities planned on the calendar. We strive to have some time to do things that are really meaningful to us. Unfortunately, things happen and obstacles come up or an unexpected situation arises. And what do you do? You end up giving up your activity that you planned on doing. However, if you do as Laura suggests and create some backup slots in your schedule, then you have an opportunity to actually get to do some of the things that you planned on doing for the week. So it does help if you get into a mindset of regularly scheduling some extra time in your schedule. You know, don't use up every minute. And then when the time comes, if something interrupts what you planned on doing, you can use that backup slot. If nothing happens in the week, then you have found yourself some extra time to do something else that you might wanna do. On Friday, February 17th, Laura sent planning questions for rule number five, create a backup slot. Planning question number one, think back over the past week. Have you had to skip something fun or important because something else came up? What was the priority and what came up? I ended up having to cancel plans with my friends, Shelly and Helen, for a breakfast that we were having to welcome Ashley, Helen's friend from Colorado, who was coming to visit for Mardi Gras. I had to cancel because my dad and I needed to take care of our passports. I was applying for my very first passport and my dad was renewing his and we had to go take pictures and then go to the clerk of court and then take care of all the paperwork. So I wasn't able to attend breakfast. Now the passports are important because my daddy and I are going to Sicily in September and we have to make sure that we get those passports and plenty enough time to be able to travel at that time. Question number two, look to the upcoming week. When could you build at least two hours of open space into your life? Identify a primary spot, identify a secondary spot. My first spot is Thursday in between a dentist appointment as well as my improv class in the evening. I have to do both of these in Metairie. The second slot or my secondary slot is on Friday. The next two planning questions are, what challenges might keep you from building open space into your life? How can you address these challenges? Right now, it's not too much of a problem for me to have some extra space in my schedule because I'm in a unique situation where I'm not working a full-time job outside my home. So I do have open spaces and I can move things around if necessary. The last planning question is, if life went perfectly, what would you use your open time for? Well, I would like to say that I would go out and have lots of fun during that time, but that would not be the case. Knowing me, I would end up filling it with some unfinished chores that I needed to do, create some more content for my channel or my blog, or possibly even use it for some more reading time because sometimes as much as I love to read, it can be a challenge to fit it in with everything that's going on in my life, especially if it tends to be a busy week. It's reflection time. Laura always sends us questions to reflect on how we do with our rules and rule number five is no exception. Question number one is, when were the backup slots that you built into your schedule? I actually ended up with four slots. I had my original slot on Thursday in between my dentist appointment and my improv class. 
and then I had my original Friday slot. I also added a Tuesday evening slot about two hours because I knew that I might be meeting with my friend's daughter Claire to help her with a school assignment. And then I also left open time on Saturday night in case my husband wanted to do something that evening. Reflection question number two. What effects did you see in your life from building open space into your schedule? It actually made me less stressed for the week because I knew I had some extra time to do some tasks that I might or might not have gotten to in the week. Having that big chunk of time on Thursday because I couldn't come home in between my dentist appointment and my improv class, it was just a very relaxing block of time. I ended up going to a restaurant and having some sushi. I went right next door to PJ's Coffee, got myself a coffee, a medium coffee, opened up my laptop. I had my Tranquility by Tuesday book. I was able to work on some notes for that, read the next chapter I needed to read. I was also able to plan some tasks that I needed to take care of for the upcoming week. And then I was able to also go visit my parents for a couple of hours before going to my class. So it really was wonderful having that chunk of time. Secondly, I was not able to do the editing I wanted to do on Wednesday because I ended up having to go run some important errands and also take care of some financial stuff I needed to take care of. So that editing got moved to Friday because I had that open space. And then I was also able to do some extra chores that day. And then in the evening, because I didn't have anything planned, my husband and I started watching the TV show Wednesday. Now I did end up using my Tuesday slot to help Claire, but it was only for about an hour, so I had an extra hour to do something for myself once I got home. I also was able to use my Saturday time. We had no set plans. My friend Helen ended up getting a new job, so we wanted to celebrate with our friends, Carrie and Shelly. So we went over to their house and had dinner and some snacks. It was just really a great time. I'm really glad I left that time open for us to be able to have fun with our friends. The next three reflection questions are, what challenges did you face while implementing this week's strategy? How did you address these challenges? If you needed to modify this rule, how did you do so? Well, I can honestly say I had no challenges. I didn't have to deal with challenges and I didn't have to modify anything. I think this is the first rule in this entire challenge so far that I have not been a challenge in my own life that could stop me from implementing the rule and that I didn't actually have any issues with the rule. Rule number six, how likely are you to continue creating backup slots in your life? Very likely. I really do like this rule a lot. I think it's because I'm feeling less pressure if I can't get to a task on one day, I know that I have a backup time set aside to be able to complete that task. Also, if something does come up or if I'm taking too long to create a task, I know that I have that time built in. The other thing is, in communicating with Liz about this rule, I kind of had like a little epiphany that maybe instead of having four backup slots, I would have the two, like Laura suggested, and the other slots, I could actually put in some tasks that I really want to get to, but I've kind of put on the back burner and feel like that I don't have enough time to do them. Well, I want to go ahead and try to put some of those tasks on my calendar as well. The other thing is, and talking with my sister, is that I could also have a running list of tasks to do with how long I think those tasks will take. And if I end up with an open slot of time, because nothing happened during the week to cause me not to complete what I needed to do, 
then I can use those open blocks of time to work on some other things that I want to get to as well. I made two observations about this rule that I think are worth mentioning. The first one is I know myself and I know from time to time I do procrastinate, especially if it's a task that I find kind of daunting, like paperwork. I can't stand filling out paperwork. However, I need to make sure that I don't spend time procrastinating instead of completing a task because I know that I have a backup slot later on in the week. The backup slot is there for you to be able to complete tasks that you don't get to, either they take longer than you anticipated or something arises in the week that prevents you from getting to it. But that doesn't mean that you use that time, you know, frivolously and then have to rely on your backup slot. The second observation is I do think the backup slot creates flexibility. If there is something that comes up that's enjoyable, say you have a friend that comes into town and wants to grab lunch with you, if there is something you had planned during that time that can be moved to your backup slot, why not be able to do that? So I do think that the backup slot can be a tool that helps you have a little more flexibility in your schedule, but it also needs to be protected against procrastination. Now it's time for me to share how I'm doing with the other four rules. First rule is, did you observe a bedtime this week? Yes, I did. I went to bed five nights at 10.30 or earlier one night was 10.35 and another night was 11.15. The night I went to bed at 11.15 was on Saturday night when my husband and I went to my friend's house and we were celebrating Helen getting her new job. I did not spend time on social media just scrolling any of those nights. There was another night that I was working on content. I was working on reviewing books that I had read and also posting my reviews with pictures on Instagram. The other five nights, I ended up reading right before bed, which has been one of my goals is to read as part of my winding down routine. Now I am getting up anywhere between six and 6.45. So not quite getting up exactly at six o'clock. I think I only got up at six one morning. However, the fact that I'm able to get up before seven makes me pretty happy as well. Next rule, did you plan on Fridays? Yes and no. I did the rule of planning, but I didn't do it on Friday. I didn't do it on Saturday either. I ended up planning on Sunday morning again. This is the second week in the row that I have planned on Sunday morning, which is fine because at least the planning is getting done. Eventually, I'm hoping that I can either plan on that Friday morning or a Saturday morning. The third rule, did you move by 3 p.m. most days? Yes, I moved four times in this week and I am so excited. On Monday, I had been blogging in the morning and then I went to go get ready to film a video. So between filming and getting ready, I took a 10 minute break. I went outside and just walked for 10 minutes. That was at 11.40 a.m. Then on Tuesday, I was editing outside actually and my husband called so I got up and I did a walk and talk for about 15 minutes and then I was throwing the toy with my dog Luna. So that happened at 10.45 a.m. On Wednesday, I was just doing some things, getting ready to start lunch. My friend Simon called at 11.35. I went ahead and went outside with the dogs and I walked around. I would stop periodically and throw the toy with Luna. And then on Thursday at 8.20 in the morning, because I knew I was going into Metairie, I went ahead and gave Tootie, my little dog, 
a walk for about 15 minutes. So I'm really pleased with how well I did with this rule because this one has been probably the most challenging rule next to getting to bed on time. The fourth rule, did you do your chosen activity three times? Well, I have two activities and I did both of them three times during the week, at least. So the first one is to read my Choose Joy book that has the three minute devotions and I read five times this week. I'm excited. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. My other activity is Outside 23 and 23, which is Gretchen Rubin's challenge. And I did it three days, and I probably really should say I did it four days. On Monday, between my 10 minute walk and doing some outside chores, I was able to get my 23 minutes in for outside. Tuesday, between my 15 minute walk and then I edited my video outside, I started at 9.20 and went all the way to 12.05. On Wednesday, I had my 25 minute walk while talking to Simon on the phone. And then probably Thursday, I could count also because I walked Tootie for 15 minutes. That left me with eight more minutes. And I have to believe that I was outside walking to and from at least eight minutes between the dentist, going to the restaurant, going to the coffee shop, going to visit my parents, and then also walking into my improv class, walking out of my improv class. All of that had to equal up to about eight more minutes so that I could get the full 23. But the fact that I was able to do it on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is huge. And just being aware of trying to fit that in, so having that challenge just really does help. It's, it's benefiting me in some way, and that, that makes me happy. It's check-in time with Liz of Retro Betty Reads, and this is what she has to say about rule number five. I'd say I accomplished the goal, but it was an uphill climb. My schedule is jam-packed until mid-May, and so building in backup slots doesn't really mesh with how I like to get things done during a week. As someone who gets a ridiculous amount of satisfaction from crossing things off of a to-do list, the ambiguity of knowing I can postpone something for a later time means I wind up procrastinating and then feeling extra pressure to get that activity done. I can absolutely see how this would be useful to most people, but I just don't think my brain works that way. So you see, she and I were on that same page about the procrastinating because you could fall into that trap if you tend to procrastinate. I really do think that's a good know thyself better situation uh, with how you are able to implement this particular rule. As for the other rules, she thinks that they're all becoming habits at this point, which I think is awesome. I'm applauding you, Liz, for this because it's kind of hard to implement new rules and strategies and we're doing it week after week, adding a new one on. It makes some of them easier as time goes on, but if you have one that happens to be a challenge, then is it gonna work out in the end? That's going to be the question that we need to answer. Now, she does say, except for the pesky one about moving before three, that is the one that's causing her the most challenge. She says, but it is brighter in the morning, so I am going to experiment with a short dog walk before work for that upcoming week. I am excited for Liz because I think she's getting some benefit from this. Some of these strategies are really working with her. And I know that she's probably not going to continue doing all of them, but the ones that are working, why not? Why not do something that can help you use your time efficiently and be able to spend your time the way you wanna spend your time instead of it always being dictated by someone else or something else that may not be as beneficial for your life. The next rule that Liz and I will be implementing next week is rule number six, 
one big adventure, one little adventure. And here are the planning questions for rule number six. Number one, what big adventures, taking a few hours, would you like to try in the next month? List at least three. Number two, what little adventures, taking about an hour, would you like to try in the next month? List at least three. Number three, think about this past week. Did you have any adventures, big or little? What were they? Number four, now look ahead to next week. What big adventure would you like to have next week? When could you experience this big adventure? Number five, what little adventure would you like to have next week? When could you experience this little adventure? Number six, what obstacles might keep you from having these adventures? And number seven, how can you address these challenges? As always, thank you for stopping by. I really do appreciate you spending time with me, especially during this Tranquility by Tuesday challenge and seeing what I was up to with rule number five, create a backup slot. I'll be here again next week with rule number six, one big adventure, one little adventure. In the meantime, stay amazing and be adventurous.